Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everybody. Today I've got a review for the Walmart exclusive Vintage G1 release of the Decepticons Ravage and Rumble. Probably already know this, but they are cassette minions to the Decepticon Soundwave, who is currently also available at Walmart. So rest assured, we'll be taking a look at them along with Soundwave and some more cassette buddies. So first we're gonna take a look at their packaging. We got this really nice 80s artwork of Ravage and Rumble here. We got the toys and little blisters with their uh, accessories being stored up top. On the back, you actually have their instructions on the packaging itself. So you can see Rumble's quite a bit more complicated than Ravage's. And then here you have their tech specs. So for Ravage, his function is saboteur. Quote, today's Autobots are tomorrow's scrap metal. Which is interesting because in the cartoon he really never spoke, but, you know. Uh, so, description. Ravage operates best alone, a creature of the night, craftiest of all Decepticons. Adept at devising deadly new strategies. Remains aloof from others, but his deeds command their respect. Can virtually escape detection, emits an electromagnetic emission shield, has a soundless walk, disappears in subdued light or shadow. Carries two powerful heat-seeking missiles. Light-sensitive, can be blinded. I don't know if they ever really use that last part in any of the fiction. He's sensitive to light. Maybe I'm wrong. And then for Rumble here, we have Function Demolitions. Destroy what's below and what's above will follow. Good old gravity. All right, his description. Rumble is your basic street punk. Small but always acting tough. Quick temper and mean disposition. Follows Megatron's orders eagerly. Transmits immense low-frequency ground waves to create powerful earthquakes. His small size limits his physical strength, but his ability to shout at the ground makes him difficult to approach in a fight. So, very cowardly guy with some big weapons, pretty much. So yeah, that is their packaging. So we're going to go ahead and open these guys up now. Alright, and here's Rumble and Ravage in their cassette modes, along with their accessories. Um, they both have stickers along the front showing these cassette details. And then on the back, just robot stuff. Same thing here. There's Japan on there. And yeah, a little rub sign there, which obviously is a Decepticon one. Now, personally, I feel out of all of the classic cassettes, or at least the, the original batch of them, I think Ravage makes by far the weakest tape mode. Which is a shame, because I think he's my favorite cassette. May have something to do with my heavy love of Beast Wars, but... You know... I hate that he has such a weak cassette mode. Though, as you'll see, he more than makes up for it with his Jaguar mode. Here you can see... Rumble's little gun slash... Backpack thing. You got... Ravage's little rocket launchers here. And here we've got G1 Soundwave, so we can show off their play feature. So all you do, you just open his compartment there. You can do this in either mode. Uh, place the guy in there, make sure they go all the way down, close it up, and then boom. Got a cassette inside. I'll go back up to deploy them. Ravage is the same way. Fits in quite nicely. And you got Ravage inside too. So it's simple, you know, by today's standards, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. But, you know, back then, this was this was cool. I remember, um, I don't think I ever played with G1 Soundwave as a child, but I did have a friend who had G1 Blaster, and I just, I couldn't get enough of that thing. It was so cool. Oh, and I guess I should point out that for all, you know, intents and purposes for this review, we're calling the Red Guy Rumble, just because that's what the toy is called. So we're going based off that. This isn't me making a statement in the grand debate of who's who. I'm just keeping it simple. All right, we're gonna go ahead and transform these two now. We start with Rumble. Go ahead, and flip him around. You can see his little robot parts. You know, swing his legs down. So unbend the knee, swing down the hip, and then rotate it this way to where the sticker details are facing you. Same thing on this side. Oop. Jumping the gun there on that foot, but yeah, you want to slide the feet out. You just kind of push them out from the underside, they slide right out. You're gonna 
kind of unfold his arms. And when you take this one out, his head's gonna pop up, so he's gonna have a heart attack. A little spring, which can be a problem as the toys age. I know there's some old uh, rumbles and frenzies out there where like the head doesn't come up all the way or it's crooked and it looks kind of bad. I think one of my like SG cassette guys has that issue where his head kind of tilts. Anyway, uh, spin the arms around and you position them and you can't you can't put them like straight down but as far down as they go so you kind of instead just end up with this weird gorilla side bend thing going on here but yeah so that's his robot mode then what you want to do is attach his weapons and they go to the little holes in his back same holes you use for the cassette tape you gotta wriggle them in there a little bit because they're kind of a tight fit. Be careful, you don't want to strip the chrome off. So, just a little bit of light wiggling to get them in there usually helps. And yeah, this is Rumble's robot mode. He's very flat, you know, definitely looks like he transforms into a rectangle. But he's cool enough looking. He's got the big backpack wing thing going on there, so. And I do like his red and black color scheme. Okay, next we're doing Ravage. He's a little more complex. So what you want to do with him is first you're going to unfold these. These are, kind of, these are his hind legs. And kind of position them in a basic way for now. And unfold the front legs. Just go kind of the same way. Like so. Then you're going to flip his tail down like that. Lastly, flip down his head. So, Ravage takes the flat thing to like a whole new level. His legs are just kind of right together. I mean, he's almost two-dimensional. Uh, but the legs do move independently of one another. So you can still, you know, kind of pose him like he's walking or in a battle stance. Does have some balance issues because he is so thin. So if you shake your, you know, surface that you have him on or something, he may fall over. Next, you want to attach his rocket launchers or rockets or whatever. And you plug them both into the same hole, just on two separate sides. So you don't want to push it all the way in. Because one might block the other, but... And you get them just like that. Luckily, because they're both, you know, on one side, it doesn't throw them off balance or anything. Uh, probably does make them slightly more likely to fall over. It's a weight distribution. But there you go. That is his completed Jaguar mode. Here's the two of them together. Obviously, two very different forms that they take. One's a little guy, one's a cat. Uh, but it is neat that they both come from basically the same shape, same object. So now that we've seen this, we're gonna go ahead and do some comparisons. All right, here they are with their Masterpiece counterparts. The Masterpiece toys were designed to be a direct update to the old toys. Uh, they still turn into cassettes, which are roughly the same size as the G1 cassettes, but they're designed to have you know a lot more articulation be a little more filled out, not quite so flat. So you see the Masterpiece Rumble here. A little bit taller than G1. Both still pretty flat, but this guy has a lot more in the way of articulation. He's got ball joints on his shoulders, hinges, all that, so he can move around as much as he needs to. Unlike the other Masterpiece guys, uh, his weapons are not integrated into the cassette mode. They are separate pieces. They do have to be stored separately, just like the G1 version. He fixes the weird gorilla elbow thing going on with the first toy. So overall, I think he's an absolute improvement. The Ravage, on the other hand, he's more of a mixed bag. He definitely improves on the old toy as far as flatness. He is, you know, much more fleshed out looking. 
He does integrate his uh, rockets into his body, though they end up being quite a bit smaller in relation to his main body. And unlike Rumble, he's actually smaller than the G1 toy by a fair bit, too. So he comes off looking rather diminutive. One thing I like about the G1 Ravage toy is that he is very big for something that turns into a cassette. So overall, the engineering is much more impressive on this guy. I just wish they could have found a way to make him bigger. And then just for fun, here they are with Soundwave. So you can see them working with their leader. Like I said before, their cassette modes are still compatible with his robot mode. They are also compatible with the Masterpiece Soundwave, though the Masterpiece cassettes are not compatible with G1 Soundwave, so only goes one way there. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. These are very simple toys. They exist almost solely to fill out Soundwave's army of minions and to interact with them. Uh, it's $20 for this set, which it's a bit on the high side. Soundwave himself is 50. He comes with Buzzsaw. So it's going to be a little pricey. Though these are almost completely identical to their original releases. I don't think there is any molding or color differences. Uh, so considering what you would pay for the 80s toys on the secondary market, it's a pretty good deal. I can only really strongly recommend these to, you know, longtime collectors or people that just really want to get in on the 80s toys because they missed out the first time. But either way, they're fun. They're a nice little look back at the, the engineering that was really ahead of its time back in 1984. Well, I think these are actually designed before 84, they are released in 84. So yeah, uh, is it worth picking up? If you got the cash to spend, sure. But that's just how I feel about them. Let us know what you think in the comments section. If you like this review, go ahead and toss it a thumbs up. If you want to see more reviews like this or any of my other Transformers videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. Thank you for joining me at this look at Ravage and um, the red one. And with all that said, I will see you next time.